The woods were already filled with shadows one June evening, just before eight o'clock, although a bright sun, low in the west, still shone through the trees. A little girl was driving home her cow, a slow-moving, annoying creature, but also a good companion among the shadowy trees. Their way home was deep in the woods, but their feet knew the path very well, so the darkness did not matter. It often took a long time to find the cow before Sylvia could bring her home. The cow seemed to enjoy hiding among the bushes. She wore a loud bell around her neck, but the clever creature had discovered that the bell did not ring if she stood very still. Luckily, the cow gave good milk and lots of it, so her owners did not mind about her hiding. And Sylvia had all the time in the world, and very little to do in that time except chase the cow. The cow had now decided she wanted to go home, and stepped along the path more quickly. Sylvia wondered what her grandmother would say, because they were very late. It was a long time since she had left home at half past five. But Mrs. Tilly had chased the cow herself on many summer evenings and knew how difficult the old cow could be. She also knew that Sylvia loved being outside in the woods and fields. It was a great change for a little girl who had lived for eight years in a crowded noisy town full of factories. Old Mrs. Tilly had chosen Sylvia from her daughter's houseful of children to come and live with her at the farm. Sylvia was afraid of people, her mother said, but Mrs. Tilly just laughed. I guess she won't be troubled much with people up at the old place. So the old grandmother took Sylvia away. And when at last they reached the door of the lonely farmhouse, and the cat came to walk around their legs purring loudly. Sylvia whispered that this was a beautiful place to live in, and she would never wish to go home. That was a year ago, and now the girl and the cow followed the shadowy path through the woods. The cow stopped to drink in a little river, and Sylvia stood still and waited, letting her feet cool themselves in the shallow water. Up above her, in the great branches of the tall trees, the leaves moved gently in a little wind, and the birds were singing, preparing for the night. Sylvia herself felt sleepy, but it was not far to the house now, and the air was soft and sweet. She felt that she belonged in this quiet world of grey shadows and moving leaves, and her life in the noisy town seemed far away. Suddenly the little woods girl heard a clear whistle not far away. Not a bird's whistle, which is a friendly sound, but a boy's whistle loud and strong and full of fight. Frightened, Sylvia tried to hide behind some bushes, but she was just too late. The enemy had discovered her, and called out in a friendly voice. Hello, little girl, how far is it to the road? A good long way. Answered Sylvia in a frightened little whisper. She was not brave enough to look at the tall young man, who carried a gun over his shoulder, but she came out from behind her bush and again followed the cow. The young man walked along beside her. I have been hunting for some birds. The stranger said. And I have lost my way, and need a friend very much. Don't be afraid. He added gently. Speak up, and tell me what your name is. And do you think I can spend the night at your house? and go out hunting early in the morning? Sylvia was more frightened than ever. What would her grandmother say about this? She did not know what to do and looked down at the ground. In the end she managed to whisper. Sylvie, when the young man again asked her name. Mrs. Tilly was at the door when the three companions arrived. The cow gave a loud moo to explain matters. Yes, you ought to be sorry. Mrs. Tilly said to the cow. Where was she hiding herself this time, Sylvie? But Sylvia kept silent, not knowing how to explain the stranger. The young man put his gun by the door and dropped his hunting bag next to it. He said good evening to Mrs. Tilly, told his story, and asked for a night's rest at the farm. Put me anywhere you like. He said. I must be off early in the morning, before day but I am very hungry indeed. You can give me some milk, that's clear. Oh yes, we can give you milk, said Mrs. Tilly. And you're welcome to what we've got. I'll milk the cow right now, and you make yourself at home. There's plenty of comfortable places to sleep round the farm. She added kindly. Now step round and put out a plate for the gentleman, Sylvie. Sylvia disappeared at once, pleased to have something to do, and she was hungry herself. 
The young man was surprised to find this clean and comfortable little house in the New England wilderness. He had stayed in very different kinds of homes, where the chickens lived in the same room as the family. He listened with interest to the old woman talking, he watched Sylvia's pale face and shining gray eyes, and he said it was the best supper that he had eaten in a month. Afterward, the new friends sat in the doorway together while the moon came up. I buried four children. Mrs. Tilly told the young man. Sylvie's mother and one son are all the children that I have now. Dan, my boy, was a great hunter, he was always out in the woods. Sylvie is like him, she knows all the woods and fields, every tree and bush. The wild creatures think she's one o' them. The squirrels will come and eat right out o' her hands, and all kinds o' birds. She knows all o' them. Just like Dan. He's been gone for years. She said sadly. Dan and his father, they didn't get along. There was some family sadness hidden in those words, but the young man did not hear it. He was too interested in something else. So Sylvie knows all about birds, does she? He said. He looked round at the little girl who sat, shy and sleepy, in the moonlight. I've been collecting birds myself ever since I was a boy. Mrs. Tilly smiled. But there are two or three unusual ones that I haven't found yet. Do you put them in cages? Asked Mrs. Tilly. Oh no, they're stuffed. And I've shot or caught every one myself. I saw a white heron two days ago, and I've been following it. The little white heron, it is. And he turned to look at Sylvia, hoping that she had seen it. A strange tall white bird with soft feathers and long thin legs. Its nest is made of sticks, often in the top of a high tree. Sylvia's heart gave a wild beat. She knew that strange white bird and had once got close to where it stood in the green marsh grass over at the other side of the woods. I'd like to find that heron's nest more than anything. The young man said. I'd give ten dollars to anybody who could show it to me. He added. And I plan to spend the rest of my vacation hunting for it. Mrs. Tilly listened to all this with amused interest, but Sylvia was watching the moonlight dancing in the trees. It was impossible to decide, during that night, how many wonderful things those ten dollars could buy. The next day the young hunter walked around the woods, and Sylvia went with him. She had lost her fear of the young man, who was friendly and kind. He told her many things about the birds and where they lived and what they did. And he gave her a pocket knife, which was a wonderful thing to her. She liked him very much indeed, but she did not like the shooting. She could not understand why he killed the birds that he seemed to love so much. But as the day passed, Sylvia still watched the young man, and the woman's heart, asleep in the child, slowly began to learn the dream of love. Together they stepped softly through the woodlands. They stopped to listen to a bird song, then went forward, carefully moving branches to one side. They spoke little, and only in whispers. The young man going first and Sylvia following, with her gray eyes dark with excitement. She was sad because they did not find the white heron, the bird that the young man wanted so much. But Sylvia only followed where he went. She could never speak first. It was hard enough for her to whisper yes or no to answer questions. At last evening came, and they found and drove the cow home together. And Sylvia smiled happily when they came to the place where she heard the whistle and was afraid only the night before. Half a mile from home, at the far edge of the woods, on high ground, a great pine tree stood. It was the last tree of an older forest, and around it a new wood of younger trees had grown. But the old pine tree's head stood high above them all, and was seen from miles away across land and sea. Sylvia knew this tree well. She believed that at the top it was possible to see the Atlantic Ocean. The little girl had never seen the sea, but she had often dreamed about it. Now, she had a new idea, which filled her with excitement. From the top of this great tree she could see all the world. So couldn't she also see where the white heron flew, where it came from, and where it went to? She would see where it flew into the trees, and she would remember the place, and find the hidden nest. What an adventure it would be! And how wonderful, later in the morning, when she could tell her great secret!
The young hunter and the old grandmother slept deeply that night, but Sylvia lay awake, waiting for the short summer night to pass, and her great adventure to begin. Before daylight, she quietly left the house and followed the path through the woods. The birds were making their first sleepy little calls, but Sylvia was thinking only about the great change that had come into her dull little life. Ah, Sylvie, Sylvie, do not forget that the birds and animals of the forest were your first friends. Now she came to the great pine tree, and small and foolish Sylvia began to climb. First, she must climb the white oak tree next to the pine tree. She had often climbed this tree, and knew that one of its high branches went into the pine tree, and she could move from one tree to the other. She made that dangerous crossing safely, and now began to climb the pine tree itself, using all her fingers and toes to hold on. The way was harder than she thought. She must reach far and hold fast. A red squirrel, coming down the tree, stopped in great surprise when it saw her, and then ran away along a branch. Bravely, she climbed upward. Light was just appearing in the eastern sky, and the small songbirds began to sing their welcome to the new day. Higher and higher Sylvia climbed. Her fingers ached from holding on, and the roughness of the branches hurt her feet. But on she went. Perhaps the old pine tree welcomed this stranger among its branches and loved the brave, beating heart of the gray-eyed child. At last, Sylvia's face appeared like a pale star, and she stood, tired and aching, but bright with victory, high in the treetop. Yes, there was the sea in the east, with the sun making a golden path across it. And in the west, the woods and farms, the green fields and white villages, reached miles into the distance. Truly, it was a great and beautiful world. The birds sang louder and louder, and the sun grew brighter. Sylvia could see the white sails of ships out at sea, and the purple-pink clouds began to turn white. Where was the white heron's nest in this sea of green branches? Now look down, Sylvie, to where the green marsh lies between the trees. There, where you saw the white heron once, you will see him again. Look, look. Something white is flying upward from the dead hemlock tree by the green marsh. It comes higher and higher, and flies past the great pine tree, its white wings beating slowly. Now it lands on a branch nearby, and cries back to his mate on the nest below and cleans his feathers for the new day. The child watches, her heart full of happiness. She knows the wild white heron's secret now. In a minute he flies away, back down to his home in the green world below. Then Sylvia begins the dangerous climb down, careful not to look down, and ready to cry sometimes because her fingers ache and her feet hurt. But she wonders over and over again what the young man will say to her when she tells him how to find his way straight to the heron's nest. Sylvie, Sylvie! Called the busy old grandmother again and again, but Sylvia's small bed was empty. The visitor woke up and hurried to get ready for his day in the woods. He was sure from the shy little girl's face that she knew where the white heron was. Here she is now, paler than ever, her dress dirty from the pine tree. The grandmother and the hunter stand at the door together and question her, and the great moment has come to speak of the dead hemlock tree by the green marsh. But Sylvia does not speak after all, although the young man's kind eyes are looking straight into her own. He can make them rich with money. He has promised it, and they are poor now. She wants so much to make him happy, and he waits to hear the story that she can tell. No, she must keep silent. Why, suddenly, is it forbidden to speak? It is the first time in her young life that the great world has put out a hand to her and must she push it away, because of a bird? The sound of the great pine tree's branches is in her ears, she remembers how the white heron came flying through the golden air. And how they watched the sea and the morning together, and Sylvia cannot speak. She cannot tell the heron's secret and give its life away. The pain in that loyal heart was great when the young man went away disappointed later in the day. The promise and the dream of love had gone forever. For a long time she heard again his whistle as she came home with the cow. And she even forgot her sadness at the sound of his gun and the songbirds falling silent to the ground. Were the birds better friends than their hunter, who can tell? But remember, you wild creatures of the woodland, what this child has lost. Bring your love and trust and tell your secrets to this lonely country child. The End Hope you have enjoyed the story. Subscribe to Let's to find more fascinating and exciting stories.